But I want to talk this morning about the way forward. What is going forward look like for you? Sometimes we look at our life, and if we want a promotion or if we want to change, we say, we got to go to the other location. Maybe we got to have a, a different job. Or something has to come our way in order for me to get to the place that God has for me. But I was looking at Hebrews and, uh, this week, and, and I started to see that maybe your breakthrough is right in your hands. Maybe what God has for you this week is obtainable. It's something you can do. So I started looking at how, God, how can we go forward? How can you help us get to the place that we need to be? You see, sometimes we make mistakes. We've done some things that maybe we shouldn't have. And the way forward in our life looks difficult. It's a tough road. The way forward seems not to be promising. Maybe we should have done something and we didn't and we feel stuck this morning. We feel like the ship has left us and we're here still trying to pick up the pieces. May I say that the way forward for you in your life is something that God can do for you this week. Let's read a few scriptures. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're talking this morning about the way forward. What's the way forward look like for you? As we see here, Paul was possibly the writer. He was trying to help you and I. Is, is there water on? Is that? Uh, why don't you go check that, John? I think I'm hearing something. But three things. First of all, it says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. What does the way forward look like for you? How's God going to get you there? How's God going to help you to become all that he's called you to be? First of all, it says, let us throw off everything that hinders. Did you know that the enemy wants to bring you down. You know that the enemy wants to discourage you and to keep you from becoming all that God has called you to be? In this scripture, that's all right, I'm sorry. In this scripture, there's three suggestions for you and I on how you and I can become all that God has called you to be. Sometimes we look through our breakthrough through a miracle. Sometimes we look through our breakthrough for God to do something for us. Today, God is telling us that if we put into practice just a few things that maybe you could find what you're looking for. First of all, it says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. There's a lot of things that want to hinder you. What do you mean by that? You see, there's a lot of things that want to kind of box you in. God has a plan for your life. God has some ideas. God is not through with you in your life. And it would be easy for you to leave some of it on the table. It would be easy for you to hold back because of some mistakes you made or because you're not as far as you want to be. But did you know that you could have your breakthrough this week if you would? Deny yourself of some things that are hurting you. You see, when we get it in our thoughts that 
that sin does bring us down. It's a weight on our life. Sin, many times, as it says here, is, is a, a dream ruiner. It's something that squashes what God wants to do in our life. So you know what? A good understanding of how we're going to get farther? If we practice, if we see that, if I live right, if I run after righteousness and holiness, that maybe God can open a door for me. Maybe there's something on the other side. So we see, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Can we throw off those things that are hurting us? Number two, it says here, let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Did you know that there is a race marked out for you? You got to stay in your lane if you are going to capture everything that God has for you. I remember running cross country in high school and some of the, the, the fields, uh, they would have a flag and sometimes we would walk the, the, uh, the area prior, maybe three miles and there would be flags that you had to go around and you had to stay within the flags or you'd be disqualified. Did you know it would be easy for you and I to say, well, it's too tough, it's too hard. It would be easy for you and I to throw in the towel. Listen, your life is too important to give up now. My brother, my sister, God did not bring you this far to leave you where you're at. Is it going to get hard? Yes, it is. Sometimes it would be easy for you and I to say, well, if I change cities, maybe that's better. Maybe if I change jobs, that's where it's at. Maybe I need a better job. There's nothing wrong with thinking and challenging yourself. But did you know that your breakthrough might just be right before you? What do you mean by that? Sometimes we're looking for to win the lottery. Then I will hit it big. Oh, if this happens to me, if I get this phone call, then maybe I will have the happiness that I need. If I'll meet this person. But did you know that there's some things that we could do in our lives right now that could bring forth our miracle? So maybe you're in control of your destiny and you don't even know it. Maybe you're in control of what God wants to do in your life. Listen, my brother, promotion can come to you. If we take some advice, there's three things where it says, we are, uh, let us, there's three things where it, suggestions let us throw off let us run with perseverance let us fix our eyes on jesus there's three suggestions for you and i can you not throw in the towel it'd be easy for you to say well it's been tough and it would be easy for you to throw in the towel or to say it's not worth it or you get tired you see everyone gets tired Everyone doesn't want to continue on sometimes. Who really wants to go to work every day? Except my brother it's Simmons. Is that, is it Simmons? Siemens. You're the only one that wants to go to work every day, right? No. But who really wants to take care of the kids every day? Who really wants to do the, the things on a regular basis? Probably none of us here. But did you know that? in reputation, in, in being faithful, that there's a blessing in it? Sure. And it would be easy for you to overlook what God is doing in your life. You see, maybe you're actually making it and you don't even know it. Maybe you're getting farther ahead and you don't even really understand that we're, uh, what's going on in your life. It says here that let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. I really do believe that God has a plan for you in your life. I, the older I'm getting, I, I, I believe that nothing is really by accident. I really even also believe that your, your days are numbered. I, I believe that God has a plan that's marked out for you. Like a course, there's flags, but you got to run your race. You see, God's not going to run it for you. God's going to give you the plan, the calling. God's going to help you. 
He's going to breathe life in you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to give you one another. But you got to be the one to run your race. What do you mean by that? You got to be the one to pick yourself up when you're discouraged. You got to be the one to say, yes, I'm going to continue on. How, how far do you want to go in your life? What do you mean? I think that there's only, it's, I'm, I, there, it, it's so much of a limit. I, I don't know if, if God has a lot for me. You don't understand I'm, I, I'm this type of person or I've come from this background. Let me tell you something, my brother. God knows what he's doing in your life and he wants to open a door for you more than you know. Did you know that many times we close the doors through our own actions? It's true. Did you know that you can choose this week if you are going to have a good week? You can choose this week, but pastor, there's a lot of things that come against me. I understand that. But by you making the decision that you are going to live a righteous life when it's hard to. Did you know that you decide how far you're going to go? It's in our hands. If you're going to have if you're going to have God's favor and God's blessing on your life, it says here that we are to run with perseverance. It would be easy for you and I to get discouraged. It would be easy for you and I to want to throw in the towel. But God's faithfulness always promises to see you through. The next quick thing, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I believe it's supposed to said, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, my brother, my sister, man did not call you. Man is not in charge of your life. Jesus is in charge of your life. Here's what I want to say to you. Don't take your marching orders from man or this world. Take your marching orders from Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Now, what do you mean? Now, pastor, this is too easy. This is, this is something that maybe in the scriptures that I'm just not completely getting or it's too hard. Let me tell you something. If you will fix your eyes on Jesus, you're going to have a good life. Did I say you're not going to have struggles? I didn't say that. But the best life that you can carve out in this world is to be a follower of Christ. Is it difficult? Does everything always go right? I didn't say that. But these are some suggestions that Paul was giving the, the Hebrew Christians to help them to live the life every day. Sure, we want something to uh, drop our way. But did you know that God's miracle, come, miracles in your life comes in the everyday faithfulness of him in your life? Here's what I want to say. That fixing your eyes on Jesus is something that the enemy doesn't want you to do. You see, as you decide that I will serve God and God alone, you know I was reading it in Deuteronomy this week. Deuteronomy 6.13, it says this, that uh, tells us to worship the Lord, uh, our God, and Him alone. Now that's something from the beginning uh, 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 that God told the people, but it's something that is really profound. God said this, worship him and him alone. Now, I do that, Pastor, but listen. The enemy is always trying to get you to be beholden to something else. What I'm saying to you is, maybe decide now that, that God is everything to you. Maybe decide once again that come hell or high water, you're going to serve him. Not if your job goes well. Not if everything goes perfect, but that, that you are going to worship God and God alone. What do you mean? Well, what about the, the government or the jobs? Let me tell you something. Eventually, you're going to have to decide where your allegiance is. The Bible said it this way. Jesus says, listen, you love family more than me? It's, that, that's in the New Testament. He was talking about following Jesus, and he says, listen, uh, anyone that follows me is going to have to give up everything. I kind of think he was kind of um, piggybacking on the Deuteronomy scripture. Put Jesus first. Worship him alone. Here's what I want to say. Decide that God is going to get your stare. 
that you're going to fix your eyes on him. We're talking this morning about the way forward. And I'm suggesting to you the way forward, the way that you need to go forward in your life are three easy suggestions that you already know that we're just being reminded of in the scriptures. I'm suggesting that if you want a breakthrough, you could have a breakthrough this week. I'm suggesting that if you want a miracle, that if you want God to, to tie the thing up to, to help you, this is probably the way forward. I'm suggesting that no matter what your past may, may have been, no matter what you think in the future, that the way forward for you is to throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles. That we're not living in a day we're going to get involved in something stupid that goes us down some track. No, that we've gone there before. That I'm saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going there anymore. I'm not going to do this. I, I, you know, it's just not worth it. My future is too important. My family, my future family is too important. I'm not going down that road. If it's me and me alone, I'm going to serve God. Amen. That no matter what, I may, I may look stupid. I may, people may make fun of me. I may be a loner. But I do believe that the favor and the blessing of God comes as you throw off the things that hinder. You see, there are things that want to hinder you. We're talking about your breakthrough. We're talking about your life. We're talking about your promotion. We're talking about you getting to the next level. It's important that you become all that God has called you to be. God has another assignment for you. God has another level for you. And quickly, the race marked out for us. Run with perseverance. Once again, it's going to be difficult for you always to be at your best. But do you know what I like at the end of this here, this, this scripture? It says he sat down at the right hand of the throne. After he did everything, he sat down. Here's the final word for you, my brother, my sister. You can rest in Christ for where you're at. What do you mean? Listen, you've came to church. You, you worship God this, uh, this morning. You may have just drug yourself in here, but here's what I want to say. You can rest in Christ that now he's going to help you and he's going to do some things in your life that you never thought were possible. What do you mean? You see, we got to do what we can do and leave the rest to God. It says here that he sat down at the right hand. He, he did everything. He, he paved the way. And then he said, it's finished, and he sat down. Here's what I'm saying to you. Can you rest in Christ this week that God is fighting your battles? He's taking care of the things for you when you can't do it on your own? Can you sit down? Can you take your place and say, God, I may not be where I want to be, but I'm glad that I'm farther than I used to be. I may not understand everything I'm going through. It, it may not be perfect, but I'm resting in you. Let me tell you something. The enemy doesn't want you to rest in the peace of Christ. The enemy doesn't want you to rely on Jesus. The enemy from the beginning of time was always trying to separate man from God. What you're saying in your life today is, no, 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 I'm not buying into that. I'm putting God first. And what I'm suggesting to you is God's way is the right way. So I guess I'm giving you a little pep thought to keep going on. Keep serving him. What I'm suggesting to you is, is that don't get in the blues and look at your life that, man, it, it passed me by or I'm not there. No, know that what God has started in your life He's going to finish. That God loves you where you're at. And he's going to help you get there. My brother, my sister, God wants you to get there more than you do. God is excited about you becoming all that he's called you to be. Here's what I want to say. In closing, 
When the enemy wants you to mess up, when the enemy is trying to get you to do something that entangles you, that hinders you, here's what I would say. Be possibly, be one that says, oh, that, that uh, maybe have uh, uh, an interior motive that maybe some would be s- consider wrong. May your interior motive be this, that if I do this, if I go on the wrong, down the wrong way, I'm going to miss out on God's favor in my life. So I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to say no to sin and yes to God. And I'm going to believe that by doing that, that obedience, that I'm going to get farther ahead. That my open door is going to be there. Maybe you are saying, well, yeah, but that's not, you know, I, I need the right motives. Listen, the right motives are you want to be obedient to God. So anything that hinders us, and when we feel like giving up, when we feel like saying, no, it's been hard. Say, no, I'm going to do it one more time. There was never a, 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 a race that I've run, a physical race, that I didn't want to give up every single time. Every single time when I lined up on the line or whatever, come on, I want to be somewhere different. Did you know regularly in your life you're going to say, I don't want to be doing this. You know, this relationship, it's tough. Uh, marriage is tough. This job is tough. You're always going to want to be somewhere else. That's the nature of the beast, our, our life. But here, but are you going to allow that to rule you? Or are you going to be ruled by Jesus within you and what is right? You see, there is a side of you that's going to try to ruin your life. There's another side that's going to try to advance your life. So in our closing prayer, I want you to rededicate your life to the Lord. Say, God, help me. Help me to be strong. I don't want to get off track. I don't want to go down this road. It's, it's too hard to get back on track. I'm on track today. I'm going to try to stay on track. I'm going to try to keep uh, serving you and worshiping you. When I get up in the morning, as Sue said, I'm going to dedicate the day to you and I'm going to live for you. I'm going to believe as I practice this on a regular basis that I'm getting farther ahead in life. The reason you can have a good life is because Jesus paved the way for you. And we're going to rest in Christ this week. We're going to say, God, if you don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. I'm going to do my best, but you got to be the one to go before me. you got to be the one speaking to my boss. you got to be the one bringing that person by. I'm resting in you. I've given of my offering to you. I've, I've given my heart to you. Listen, God, I, I'm yours. I put you first. Now I'm asking you to do what no man can do. Bow your heads. Father, we love you. We honor you and thank you. Lord, we pray that you would touch your people, that you would be with them. Listen, I want to ask you to pray this prayer along with me, would you please? Dear Jesus, I love you. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God, do it, we pray. Bless your people, please. Give them a good week. May they find what they're looking for. God... There's some that really do need that help. Would you? I'm not twisting your arm or anything, but they did come to church and they put you first, Lord. They've had a rough week and they need you to really help them. Would you do that for them, please? Would you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on their life, we pray. Would you bless their family? Would you watch over their kids?